Welcome to another edition of the, an Ashes preview, looking ahead to the second test match. I think every England fan wants to look, doesn't want to look back at the first test match. Decisions were, whether were the right ring wrongly, toss right or wrong, team right or wrong. It's time to move on. Day and night test match in the open, uh, in the offering. And who better to have a conversation with? It is minus one. It is 6.45 and freezing cold, dark morning. But welcome along to the again, again to the one and only in the sunshine. He looks a million dollars. Welcome to Brad Hogg. And we look ahead to <laughs> Adelaide day and night test match. Hoggy, how are you first and foremost? And you know what the vibes on you know, where this uh, this second test match looks. Well, mate, I'm feeling very good. I'm over here in uh, WA, Perth, as you can see in the background. It is hot. It is uh, steaming over here. And it's a pity we're not having the second test match here. But uh, the test match over in Adelaide, I think England can fight their way back into it. I think it's going to be closer than uh, what everyone thinks. But are they going to go in with a spinner or are they going to go in with four quicks and uh, have Ben Stokes bowl as well? For me, I'd like to go in with four quicks, but you've got to watch the overrate as well. You don't want to be getting fined your whole match appearance and you don't want to be losing uh, test championship points as well. Um, so for me, that's a big decision for them. But going back to that first test match, Harmy, um, this is one thing... Uh, that it really disappoints me with hearing what's coming out of the change rooms. They were planning for different scenarios to happen in the test match, and one of those was losing a wicket first ball uh, in the innings. You shouldn't be planning like that. You shouldn't be thinking about that. Each player's got a job to move forward with. Each player knows what their role is, and uh, you, you shouldn't be putting doubts and putting that extra stress on people's mind and overthinking uh, thinking the game. Just go out there, keep it simple, do your role, and uh, look to the future, not the, uh, not, not what's uh, what's about to happen. Don't worry about it. 100%. And I think I, I, I struggled when I heard some of the comments after the game. I really did. Uh, I was obviously on BT working for you know the UK's uh, coverage of it, and I was listening to a great interview with Joe Root. I thought he spoke brilliantly, apart from one thing. Said I stuck by the decision. We made the right decision at the toss, and I'm like, Joe, you didn't. I'm sorry, you didn't. You didn't have Cook, Strauss, and Trot to get you through that first hour. You know, your batting unit at the top of the order isn't good enough to get through that first hour. When you're making this, when you're talking about decisions of losing wickets from the first ball, that alarms me a little bit as well. And one other thing, Hoggy, I don't know about you, but I heard Chris Silverwood, and Chris is a, you know, he's a good man, top man, and a good coach. But he said, the Ashes is a long series. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's not a long series. This series could be over by lunchtime on Boxing Day if you're 40 for four again and you lose at Adelaide. It's not a long series. You know, ask Nasser Hussain, you know, Andrew Flintoff, me, you know, Alistair Cook. You know, by the time, normally by the time we get to Perth, and you shook hands on day three, 10 days into the Ashes, if we don't get it right, it's finished. The series is over. Who wants to play in dead rubbers at the end of it? So... That, that concerned me a little bit about what's what's going, whether the player four seamers. It looks like the, 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 the way I've read some of the stuff is they might play Don Bess, which, again, a nice kid. Is he good enough against Australia, in Australia, when it's not going to turn as much? I think you pick your four best bowling options in your 17-man squad that you've got. And unfortunately for England, I made the joke, you know, what would you do with Bess and Leach? And I made the joke, you know, and I, it was a flipping joke, and I didn't, I didn't mean any malice by it whatsoever. I'd send them home, so I had no temptation of picking them. Because, unfortunately, England's best bowlers are the four quick bowlers. You know, there's five of them out there. We'll take the four of them and see where you get to. So that would be for me. Australia haven't got them worries, though, Hoggy. You've just got one change. Richardson comes in for, for Hazelwood, and, and I, I didn't expect anything other than Davey Warner playing. Yeah, well, I don't know whether Davey Warner will play or not. Uh, if he doesn't, I'd, I'd expect Kawaja to come in and open the batting for him. And for me, that's a win-win for Australia moving forward because if Kawaja does well, Harris doesn't, then Warner comes straight back in and opens up with Kawaja. So you've killed two birds with one stone. But the other thing is, too, uh, you look at the spinners over here in Australia, It's uh, spinners have the highest average 
on Australian conditions of any bowler in the world on any condition. So what I mean by that, uh, bowling spin in Australia is the hardest thing you can do in cricket. I think the average for spinners is 42 uh, and fast bowlers is 32. So you're right there, go with the strength and that's fast bowling. The other thing in day-night cricket, the uh, pink kookaburra, it's not the swing that matters, it is the seam that matters. So uh, it's it's more seam that does the damage with a pink kookaburra. It's more like a juke in that uh, uh, respect. So for me, you've got to play four seamers and have Ben Stokes uh, playing there as well. And just talking about Joe Root, the thing I love about him, the th- thing that... Uh, I really make, think that makes him a real leader is he cho- uh, chooses to show his vulnerability. He's prepared to come out and say, I stuffed up there. I stuffed up with Leach. I didn't have a defensive enough field. I was trying to be too attacking. Uh, and then you go to Ben Stokes. I'm expecting him to do the, uh, the heroics every game. And I'm relying too heavily on him where I've got to start trusting in my other players. And I just absolutely love that with, uh, with Joe Root. Yeah, and he's he, again. I, I come back to what he said after the game. He took responsibility on on them things. He took responsibility on saying that he should have left the ball when second innings when he went chasing a wide one against Cameron Green. I think that's what Brisbane does to your first Test match, Ashes. I think it does make your mind scrambled, and I think England got their their things their things a bit scrambled. The one thing I were there's a couple of questions I want to ask you, Hoggy. You know, one on the the pink ball Test match. I'll come back that to that in a second. But when you're talking about spin bowling, the spin bowling and spin bowling, a lot of people in this country have said, you know, Jack Leach over Nathan Lyon. Nathan Lyon got his 400th test match wicket. I keep saying this to people. In, I played my whole career against McGraw and, and Warren, and what he achieved last week was something other than heroic. 400 test wickets only being done by two other Australians, and that is Glenn McGraw and Shane Warren. From a spin bowler's point of view, you mentioned the numbers there. Nathan Lyon has got to be up there with one of Australia's all-time greats. I definitely, totally agree with you. And uh, then you then you look at it too. He wasn't bowling on the uh, wickets that Shane Warne was bowling on as well. Mm. Uh, back then, through Shane Warne's time, uh, there was a lot of rough created. The, uh, the wickets broke up a lot more, especially over here in Australia. But the thing that he does, he does his role well. Uh, it's flat over here. He gets a lot of overspin, whereas Leach doesn't get overspin. He bowls more side spin. And that overspin creates a lot of pressure. Batsman can't get down to him. He's on a good length. Uh, he, he's prepared to bowl negatively a long period of time to keep the pressure on so that the quicks out the other end can bowl short, sharp spells. So for me, everyone looks at uh, Nathan Lyon and says, well, he should be doing what Shane Warne does. No, he's not Shane Warne. At this stage, we've got four, uh, three quicks out the other end that bowl 145 plus, which is the biggest death set that any cricket team can have. And they, uh, they all swing the ball as well. And uh, then you've got Hazelwood, who's got the extra bounce. So there's a lot of variety there. Nathan rolls, uh, Nathan Lyon's role is to keep the pressure on, get the odd wicket, but make sure he's bowling the majority of overs each day so that the, uh, the quicks only have to bowl short spells. And uh, that, that's, what, that's why he's such a vital cog in the Australian team. We could go to Swepson, who uh, is going to be a bigger wicket-taking option than Nathan Lyon. But what that does, it creates a little bit of looseness uh, and every now and then he's going to get hit a bit like Leach and you have to go to your quicks a lot more. And we don't, uh, Cameron Green wasn't the all-rounder that we, uh, that, uh, that we saw uh, during this first test match. He's had injury troubles as well. And you don't want to go to your all-rounders having to bowl the extra overs. So uh, Nathan Lyon is the biggest asset that Australia has got in this particular team. And talk me through the, the pink ball test match, Hoggy. You know, you've, you're out there in Australia. The sun is shining. It's not as simple as it's going to zip around for like 70 overs of each of each game. You know, we're expecting Broad and Anderson to come in. I don't think Broad's going to play. I think Anderson will play. I think Broad will be left out again. You know, everybody's expecting this thing to go around corners, but it stays, sun, it stays sunny a lot. Just explain what the sort of time diff time constraints of the pink ball when it comes into play and how much natural light are we going to have on a flat wicket where we're going to have we're going to need multiple options from a spin bowling department and variations and see an actual bowling department um, because of variations that we're going to need 
Yeah, look, it would be great if you could have a spinner in there, but I don't think the two spinners that you've got should play at Adelaide. Um, I think Adelaide, it's a drop-in wicket. It's not the Adelaide of old when uh, we didn't have the drop-in wicket. And for me, uh, playing a couple of uh, day-night games in the white ball format as well as T20 cricket, uh, probably more T20 cricket with a drop-in wicket, and uh, being able to bat against some quicks out there. One thing that I've noticed on this Adelaide wicket, it's the most, uh, it's, it's probably one of the best cricket wickets going around in world cricket, especially on the first couple of days of a test match. There's enough there for a little bit of seam movement off the wicket for the quicks, uh, and there's a little bit of turn there for the spinners as well uh, with, with the extra grass that they leave on. And it it actually seems a lot more at night when there's a little bit of a dewy conditions in there and the moisture comes through the pitch as well. So for me, um, I, th- I think you've got to go with the seamers. That's your strength. The leech and best don't really turn the ball. They're more side spinners than over spinners like Nathan Lyon. And uh, I, th- I think where you're going to get the asset is new ball at the start of the game, then tighten it up in the middle, uh, middle session. Once the light comes in and moisture gets in the pitch again, that's where you can be a little bit more aggressive. Fantastic. Well, we've got some questions that have come in for for England and Australia fans. Uh, right, let's get to the first one. Ganga says, uh, Harmi, what will be the mentality of Rory Burns, who made no and 13 in the first test, looks vulnerable to Starks bowling in the pink ball when it's, if it will swing more? I think Rory Burns is a very, I think because of the technique he's got, he has to be mentally strong. He has to be because a lot of moving parts, a lot of people question him, especially if he nicks off every now and again. This kid not long ago got 100 against New Zealand in the test match leading into the World Test Final. He's a player of the series. I think he comes back strong. Has he got enough to come back against this fantastic bowling lineup? Well, he's going to need every little ounce of, of that mental strength to come with it. Um, and it is difficult, Hoggy. You're playing Ashes cricket or you're playing international cricket and things don't go well for you in the first test match. You're going to need some balls of steel to come back. Yeah, look, I love Rory Burns. I, um, I, he's got he's got a completely different tech, uh, technique than everyone else. And I love that about him. There's, uh, there's something uh, unnatural to him, uh, something different. And but I love his mental aptitude. The, the games that I've seen him play around world cricket, he's there to bat long periods of time. Um, it's it just be great for him to get a little bit of confidence for England's sake out the top of the order and uh, put pressure back on the Australian bowlers. I still rate him. Um, yes, he's got that initial foot, uh, foot, front foot movement right across the off stump. I'd just like to see that not move as, uh, as prodigiously uh, because if you if you watch him, the front foot goes right across, and then as the bowl, bowler lets go of the ball, he brings it back in front of the stumps. Uh, for me, that's getting him a little bit overbalanced. If he can limit that as much as possible, then he's got a big chance of uh, of capitalising on this uh, uh, of on these Australian quicks. Because when you're moving the feet that much against bowlers that are bowling 145, it's very hard to uh, get a straight bat, straight plane uh, through the through the bat. It's all right when bowlers are bowling 130, you can adjust quickly. But 145 plus, uh, you just you don't have time to adjust. Breaking news, Matt. Breaking news on the England side. Um, James Anderson and Stuart Broad are in the 12. England have rested Mark Wood and Jack Leach is in the squad as well. So no Don Beth. So it's simple, Broad or Anderson over the spinner. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. But England have named a 12-man squad. Um, No, it looks as though it could be one change. It could be Anderson for Wood or Wood and Leach out for Anderson and Broad. So that's just been announced. Um, We'll go to the next question um, because I think there'll be a question there saying, should they they both be playing? Um, Hoggy of G. Paul. uh, Good to see you again, G. Paul. To Hoggy, my question, how can a spin bowler come back from... Disadvantage a poor performance like Leach had in the first test, get a chance in Adelaide. How can we use him more wisely in this pink ball? I think that is a big, big question for the England captain. Yeah, for me, um, look, it's just about attitude. 
you've just got to be able to get on the front foot and go, right, well, that happened last time. It's an opportunity for me to play test cricket in the future. Uh, it's an opportunity for me to show the world what I can do. It's a new wicket, new conditions, Adelaide. Uh, there's going to be more grass on the pitch. In the night, uh, night session, there'll be a little bit more moisture where it'll be tackier and uh, I might be able to get a little bit more grip as well. So for me, uh, it's just about backing yourself and trying to forget what happened in the first test match. As hard as it, uh, it is, um, you've just got to believe in yourself. Jack Leach has done it before. He can do it again. Uh, he is a little bit of a fighter, but just getting over it and trying to forget about it, it's, it's more mental than anything like that. And I'll be spending a lot of time with a psychologist rather than uh, being in the nets because he knows he's got the skills. He's got the ability to do it. He knows what to do. It's just about getting the right mindset. So for me, it's not what's happening in the nets. It's what's happening uh, off the field with a psychologist. Perfect. Um, next question. Um, what we got, Aritza? What we got? Next question. Have we got one coming in? Austin is asking, uh, what are your thoughts on happening in Indian cricket in the past few years? Do you think the BCCI must give clarity to its fans? It's players like England and Australia. Ascogi, please read. Um, I've I think. Heard you there, I think I'm not sure. I think not, I think Austin's asking what you think asking, happening with the BCCIs, clarity to its fans, to its about, fans its about its players like players England and Australia. Like don't, don't really don't, get that. Don't really um, get that. I think he means by Coley um, being dropped. By Coley being dropped. His captain. His captain. Uh, all right. Uh, so this is a question. I can't quite see the question because I'm on my phone here. Coley being dropped, is that what we're talking about? Yeah, as captain. talking about Coley being yeah, dropped. Talking yeah. about Coley being dropped, yeah. Yeah, for me, for me I, I think he should have been dropped as captain from uh, the 50-over format and the T20 format. Um, he should be just ca uh, the, the test captain. I think it's way too much to be captaining all formats, especially as the Indian captain, because you've got, uh, you've got so much work that you've got to do off-field, media, uh, the advertisers, Everything else uh, that goes with being captain, I, ju I just think it's too much for one man. So I think it's going to relieve him of those duties, and I think we're going to see a lot better uh, batsmanship from Virat Kohli in all formats, and we're going to see him get the form of old. So for me, it's a big move, uh, but something that has uh, that's been needed to be required for a very long time. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. I think yeah, it's, 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 I think it's Good move for Indian good move cricket. for Indian cricket. Just to just to keep these freshness, to keep as, freshness as a test match. Test match. match. Um, right, we have got one last question. I think. Last question. Um, I think. Um, here we go. Here we go. Um, idea, uh, sir. Why England's batting is over dependent on Joe Root, and after him, why not no one taking the responsibility? Do you know what? I just think some of the players in England size aren't up to being international batsmen in Test match cricket. And as painful as it is to say that, because I know how hard the international game is. In the last year, we've had one player averaging uh, one player get a hundred other than Joe Root in Test match cricket, which was Rory Burns. We are, we've got players averaging career averages of 31, 32, and only averaging 28, 29 this this year. Um, is it simple? I just think possibly it's simple. We're not quite as good as what we think we are in Test Match Cricket. And we've got to look at how we select our side is not given a little bit like in the 90s where we give one day caps for Test Match form. We turned around the, to be the best team in the world in one day cricket and in 20 over cricket from 2015 World Cup where we picked one day players, players that were comfortable playing with a white ball. We might have to go that down the test route. But, Huggy, I think the question is really, you know, other than Joe Root, you know, who is going to stand up for England and take responsibility? Because if this series is going to go beyond Boxing Day, we're going to need somebody to do so. 
Yeah, I, I think Milan's the one, and I, uh, I've always said that. I, th I just think he's got a good temperament, he's got a good technique. But for me, it, it all comes down to the coach. And as we were talking about earlier on in the piece, if you're going in there and uh, looking at scenarios that are going to happen through the match, like losing a wicket in the first ball, well, you're, always, you're already on the back foot. You're not looking at what the player actually has to do to get himself in the best frame of mind to perform. Um, if, a, if a wicket falls, the next man in is ready to go straight away. How is he going to be... How are you going to have all the players motivated or not motivated but um, switched on when the moment counts that they've got to face the first ball when they go out to the to a wicket and it's the same with the bowling as well don't look out the negatives don't look out uh, scenarios that are going to happen what is your role in the team and how are you going to do it so if you lose four wickets like you did last time and Josh Butler is a, a, a aggressive batsman you don't want to go in and say right well you go to plan B where you'd be more defensive no you want to be aggressive uh, and play that aggressive game that you play. And uh, th that's him being defensive, is playing aggressive. And you're, you're counteracting the the, um, uh, the dominance that Australian bowlers have, have, have got. And if he comes off, he score runs quickly. And also, he, he puts the pressure back on the Australian bowlers and takes the pressure off the batsman at the other, so other end. So for me, it's getting the players in a good frame of mind rather than uh, going through scenarios. Well, what's going to happen? Adelaide, you're going to be in the Western Australian sun. Am I going to be singing and dancing at four o'clock in the morning with my cup of tea, my big scarf and my hat on watching the cricket? Or is Brad Hogg going to have his pina colada? Very, very happy man come in the next five days. Hoggy, what do you think is going to happen in, uh, in Adelaide in the day night test? Oh, look, for, for the series, I hope England wins, but I, don't, I just don't think they will. I just think uh, we've, got the, we've got the better spinner, we've got the better balanced attack, and really, um, I, I think it's the bowlers that are going to win the match for you, not the batters. 100%. I see a Broaden Anderson player for England to win. I think we've got to get ahead of the game, and one of them is going to have one of them special spells where they get four or five wickets for 15, 20 runs and really ram home advantage in that way because if we're looking for our batting unit, which hasn't fired and hasn't got 400 too many times, then I think we might be on a struggle and I hope and pray that doesn't happen. But fingers crossed in five days' time, yes, five days' time, if we can get the game to go that far, all that way, myself and Brad Hogg will be back to talk about everything that happened in a day and night test match. Hoggy, have a great five days. We'll see you soon. Thanks, for everybody, for joining. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a review. Thanks, Army.